Cool, all right, welcome back. Let's do it for Saturday morning. Um, we're actually gonna start down, down on the ground. Um, we'll start with some spinal waves and some elbow wrist warm up as well. So fingers spread nice and wide. And we're just gonna come back to a child's pose to start. So just as mentioned before, before we start with this one as well, always really important to listen to your body. We will most definitely get moving a fair bit. So, so, so important to take the modifications, rest when you need. If something doesn't work for your body, don't do it. Listen to what that says and then just actually choose something that works for you or take a lower variation as well. Have fun, this is what it's all about. Get moving, let's get a little bit of sweat on so that you can like get out and enjoy the rest of your day. So from here, when you're sitting back to a child's pose, let's just take three breaths here just to ground down Maybe come onto the fingertips in your child's pose. Full breath in. Full breath out. We're going to do that two more times. Breathe in. And breathe out. And again, inhale. And exhale. Uh, inhale, we're going to ripple forward and then exhale, come back to child's pose. So we're going to do that, that three more times. Inhale, come forward, nice strong straight arms, tailbone tucks under and exhale, finding your way back to your heels. Again, inhale and exhale. Good. Again, inhale. And exhale, now either stay with that or we're going to get a little bit more into the spine. Inhale, come forward. And exhale, drop the hips down. Inhale, press back up. And exhale, child's pose. So three more times like that. Breathe in. Breathe out, articulate. Breathe in. And breathe out. So two more times here. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, and exhale. Just starting to wake up the spine, but you can always stay with that first variation. So always listen to what it is you need. Beautiful. From this child's pose, coming to your tabletop position, we're going to do some barrel rolls here. So knees are underneath your hips, and just slowly starting to move around. So I'm moving to the right, and what I'm actually experiencing is as I exhale, I'm really drawing that belly to the spine. On the inhale, the heart lifts and the belly drops. And just really working through the digestive system and the spine, the elbow joints. Should feel pretty good. Change direction. There's a gentle pressure on the wrists, of course, especially as I come up into cat. From this position, again, just a little bit more wrist mobility, fingers spreading out to the side. And then from this position, just very, very gently side to side. As always, be gentle in your wrist, but if you're regular to this class, um, then you'll know that we do this quite often. So hopefully your wrists are getting a little bit stronger over time and with practice, it's like anything. You just have to put a little bit of repetition and consistency into things to make a difference. Beautiful, from this position, we're going to start to get into active flexors. So you can always come back to this kneeling position. I'm gonna show a variation as well. We're gonna step the right foot forward, bring the right arm up, and then slowly come back. And just keep moving through. Left foot goes through, left arm comes up. And just in your own time now, continue to move with this. Just looking for a certain sense of fluidity here. Try not to rush it. And if you want to, you can tuck your toes. You can come to a bit of a crouch. 
you warm up a little bit more through the joints and the knees. But if that doesn't work for you, then stay back down where we were. Always your choice. Do about three more or so for you guys. So the next time that you come to the front of your mat, you're going to step yourself into a squat and just either hang out here, you can move it around. That's going to be up to you and what feels good in your body. So be a little bit creative here. Listen to what feels nice. Make sure you are feeling challenged though. We want to really get out of comfortable. Um, but pain is most definitely not an option, of course. We really, really tune into that. We're gonna be here for about another five, four, three, two, and one. We're gonna find a seat. We're gonna come into some hip movements now. So we're going to this 90-90 position with the right foot on the outside of the left quad. And then just slowly starting to swivel the feet across and changing sides. I was just saying before to Jacob, I actually went for a run yesterday, I think it was. Yeah. And um, I don't, as many of you know, I don't run that often anymore. Um, yeah. So definitely feeling a lot of tightness in my calves, of course, and uh, in my hip flexors. Um, everything's really good, but when we do something, and it's probably a little bit longer than what I uh, visualize running for, um, it's really important that we complement it with other forms of movement as well as in our yin or just mobility in general, looking after the areas in and around the joints. It is just so important. Yes, I'll most definitely be doing some form of yin yoga today. <laughs> cool. So from here, we're going to just escalate this up a little bit. We're going to start to open them into the hip flexors and the groins. So just moving through. Just following along more than anything. The body naturally sort of moves in this direction. So you just get a feel for what feels good for you. We just swivel through the hips. Press down through that base hand and you'll feel that really nice back bend if that's there for you. You don't have to back bend, but you can still get that really nice stretch down the hip flexors and the quads. Last two. Cool, and one. I'll show you where we're going. So we're going to try to come up. And then from this position of coming up, maybe the hand goes down and we step one foot through. Don't worry if you don't get this. I'm just going to keep moving through. Hand goes back down. Come back to start position. Swivel around. Lean over to, so I'm leaning to the left. Coming up and I step the right foot through. From that position, slowly coming back down. So just have a little bit of play here. Like whatever is going on for you is fine. It's not about perfecting it. It's just about giving it a go. And we never get anything first go anyway, or very, very rarely. So just allow yourself to play around with this movement. It's a really nice one for the hips. You can always come back to the first or the second version that we're doing. If this doesn't work for you, you just keep going. Give it a shot. Maybe when you step through, you can come up to stand. So you can see how this is a really like functional um, way we move. Right, getting ourselves down and up off the ground. Something we should keep practicing, of course, every single day. I'm going to go for at least another 30 seconds just of this pattern. Really starting to become aware of where your body is in space, especially when you're balancing through these. Really, really nice warm up for the hips. And of course the glutes as you start to stand up. So make it to your last one. We'll come all the way up to stand. Beautiful. Let's bring the feet hip distance apart. And from that, sorry, not hip distance, a little bit wider than hip distance. And we're just going to start to circulate now getting into the knee joints. So again, a lot of you will be quite familiar with this stuff. 
um, that I'm doing. But again, just this little bit of joint work is so important, especially what, we've, what we have planned um, for the rest of the class. So I'm coming up into the balls of my feet here, super slowly trying to create this lateral circle. Using your breath, the depth is completely up to you. Change direction. So last little bit before we get stuck into it, we'll do a little bit of our shoulders. And enjoy this part of it. Like really enjoy getting into your body this morning. You know, every time, uh, every day when we wake up, this is part of the joint work that I do early so that I can actually tune into how my body is feeling today. If I have any eagles or anything I need to look after, I know before I go into movement. So therefore I can look after it. Ooh, nice. So actually before we go into our shoulders, we're just gonna do a little bit of work through the sternum. So super nice, a really beautiful space. Um, we'll keep practicing this as well um, to get that movement in between the chest and the upper back. So sternum goes forward, we'll just go straight into it, over to the right, sternum pulls back and over to the left. My feet are really grounded here and I'm trying to create a circular motion with my torso. So it's as if I'm stirring a pot with my torso. Really nice one for digestive systems, first thing in the morning. Trying to keep the shoulders like super level. Really cool to do in front of the mirror. So I'm actually just watching also in the screen here where my shoulders are, making sure I'm not leaving with the shoulders. I'll leave with the sternum. Let's change direction. So what you'll feel is a cracking open of the heart here. So you'll hear you feel this uh, crunching into the bleeds. So you feel a spreading of the ribcage in the back here and then out and around. Beautiful, let's lastly warm up through those shoulders, so figure of eight circles. This is right down to your toes, everyone as well. So there's this big movement here that's going right down into the feet. Really nice and loose, so we can get blood into the fingertips. Slow it down and reverse it. Doesn't matter if you didn't get the reverse, but keep practicing it though. That's the whole point. Beautiful. Change sides. So we're going to have go through five rounds only. We have three moves in each Tabata session today. So we go for 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, three times three, right? Change direction. Beautiful. So what I haven't told you is that a lot of the moves complement each other pretty well, which means you're going to get a really nice burn. Um, so if we're working legs, we're working legs. So we're going for it's probably about know, three and a half minutes, four minutes or so. We have good solid rest in between um, to reset, recap, listen to your body, grab a weight if you have it. So we're going to go in about 40 seconds or so. The first one that we are working towards in three moves, I'll show you what they are. It's a squat to a push up. So stand back in the mat, squat down. We walk all the way out to plank position, come down for a push up, keep the feet wide, walk all the way back up to squat and stand. So you'll do that for 20 seconds. The next one is a hollow body hold. Come down to the mat, shoulders peel off, knees above hips, either hold here or of course full option hollow body hold. 
your choice, making sure that the spine stays on the ground. The third one is a mountain climber, arms straight, knees into the chest. That's it. All right, we're going in 10 seconds. First round, squat to push, 20 seconds on in three, two, one. Have fun. Let's go. Squat all the way out to your version of a push up. You can always modify it any way you like here. Right? You can even just do squats if the push up's not for you today, or come down to this tabletop variation. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ten seconds coming into our hollow body hold. So choosing the option that works for you, spine on the ground, belly to spine, shoulders off, three, two, one. Option one, holding head. Option two, make the legs go out. Option three, hands are out as well. Your choice. Breathe. If your feet are out, you're pointing the toes and squeezing the quads. Four, three, two, one. You're going to use that hollow body shape as you come into a mountain climber. Shoulders protracted, belly to spine. Three, two, one. Your pace can either be here, if you don't want to be on your hands, you're running on the spot. Totally cool. Doesn't matter, you choose your weapon here. Choose your pace. Four, three, two, one. That's one round done, two more rounds to go. Squat to push up. So three moves, three times through. Three, two, one. All right, we know what we've got now, so take your variations, maybe stay on your toes for your push-up. That's completely up to you. But it's only 20 seconds of work. Your belly is engaged massively when you come down for that push-up. So making sure we have that sad dog through the tailbone. Three, two, one. So it's exactly the same as the hollow body hold you want to feel in your push-up. Four, three, two, one. One, please take your variations. So remember, it's only 20 seconds. So give your best. We are not here for long at all. 10. Your breath will help you here. Three, two, one. Mountain climbers, starting to get warm pretty quickly. I don't know about you. Five, four, three, Two and one, go for it. Big intensity here if you can. Push the ground away, get straight arm strength. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. One more round, guys. Hopefully, sound to feel a little bit alive. Whew. Five, four, three, Two, one, last round. It doesn't have to be fast, all right? Remember that, just good quality. And make sure you go for full range, wherever that is for you. Four, three, two, one. Set up your hollow body. Three, Two, one. So take the option, it's working for you. Make sure that spine stays on the ground though. Eyes are up, spine on the ground, belly to spine. Shoulders up, four, three, two, one. Great stuff, one more. All right, let me rest. First round is done after this. Mountain climbers, four, three, two, one. Shoulders rounded, belly, spine, go for it. Come, big push here, guys. Four, three, two, one. Find a resting pose of choice. Woo. All right, we're done, right? So four more rounds to go. So that should have woken you up. So a nice leg set here. Purely leg strength. 
So sprinter squat on the right. We've got a pulse in the middle and a sprinter squat on the left. Now, with the sprinter squat, what we're looking for, I'm going to hold a dumbbell, but my right, I'm on the tripod of my right foot, 60% of the heel, 40% of the ball of my foot. I'm on my left toes, my back foot is, um, or my back hip is slightly externally rotated. So when I come down, I'm in this position here, like I'm about to take off for a sprint. From the side, I'm most definitely not into a lunge. Right, my foot is back, hip distance apart, left hip externally rotated, chin and chest stay up, and I have no weight in my front toes whatsoever. So that's your sprinter squat. We then come into a squat position, feet underneath the hips, down for two, and then back up. And then we have a sprinter squat on the left. So we're going in about 30 seconds or so. So grab yourselves a weight uh, or something, whatever you have nearby. You don't have to though, right? It's just an option. Um, it's just to add a little bit of intensity uh, with the strength work. Again, not moving super quick, but rotating through those three moves three times. Going in eight seconds, right foot is forward. Coming into the ball of the left foot, left hip externally rotated. Three, two, one. Moving through right side sprinter squat. I have no weight in my right toes whatsoever. So I'm really trying to use the focal point of the foot here to drive through to fire up my glutes on the right. Three, two, one. Feet step underneath the hips. So your legs will cook in this one. Pretty cool. Let's, let's give it a shot. Three, two, one. Down for a double and then back up. So down for a double pulse and then back up. Again, you don't have to use a weight. Four, three, two, one. Setting up the sprinter squad to the left. So this is not even one round done. So I guess my legs are probably pretty cool from yesterday, but feeling good. So left side sprinter squat. My weight is in my left tripod of the foot. So 60% into the heel, 40% into the ball of the left foot. Right hip externally rotated onto the right toes. So short stance. And time. Nice work guys, one round done. Two more to go. So right side, sprint to squat. Here we go. Three, two, one. Chin and chest stay upright. No weight in those front toes. Really drive out of the foot. Four, three, Two, one. I'm gonna come back through the middle. Got a double pulse squat. Four, three, two, one. If anybody wants any cardio through here, you can pulse and jump. Pulse and jump. It is just an option. All right, it's actually feeling quite nice in my body to do that for now. Don't know about the next round, but it's just an option. Five, four, three, two, one. I don't know if I'm going to regret that or not. Left side sprinter squat. Setting it up. Left foot forward. Right toes. Here we go. One more round after this, guys. Doing really, really well. Stay with it. Five. Four, three, two, and one. All right, guys, last set. Right side sprinter, weight or no weight, three, two, one. You notice if I'm using the tripod of my right foot, my knee and my ankle, they have to align, right? If I'm in shoes, I can't necessarily feel that place in my foot. And it's likely that the knee might be rotating inward slightly. Which means quite possibly that the arches of the foot have collapsed. Four, three, two, and one. Why when we wear no shoes when we're doing strength work, we can really use the feet, the focal point, to really keep our body in alignment, create more strength. Three, two, one, double pulse, and then back up. 
The jump is optional. Definitely not doing it this time. My legs are cooked. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Last time through this one, left side sprinter squat. Four, three, two, and one. We're into a little bit of core work after this and straight arm strength. So make the most of these legs for now. Five, four, three, two, and one. Might be nice to walk around after that. Um, so just giving the legs a little bit of space. So, so crab, no, opposite toe touch. These are hectic. Um, they look a lot easier than what they are. So how it works is the just watch for a second, of course, we've got time. So left arm out to the side, and we're going to be lifting the left leg. I want to point the toe and squeeze the quad of the left. I lean to the left, which means I create a hollow body hold, and I reach up, try to touch the left ankle with my right hand, peeling back down. So press into the forearm, touch, grab, whatever, and then come back down. So, we're trying to resemble that hollow body hold through the middle of that. We're then going to come over into some straight arm, straight foot, a plate tuck. Heaps of different options here with this one. So coming onto the hands is not for you. Just come back into a hollow body hold, what we did before. But if not, you're ready to do the plate tuck. So option one, in, in, I'm really pulling the belly of the spine out and then out. Option, come back to a crouch. Jump in, step back out, crouch. Jump in, step back out and crouch. They, uh, <laughs> uh, they will get your heart rate up massively. But I want you to really think about the compression, which is ribs into belly button. So we're gonna go um, soon, in about 20 seconds or so. So we're going to start with the left foot extended. We're going to point the toe and squeeze the quad of the left. That's really important. I want you to think you have an active left leg. Left arm out to the side. Staying on this side. And we're going three, two, one. Reach up and try to touch the left ankle with your right hand. So we want to compress and really find that V shape. We come up 10 seconds. Use your left forearm as much as possible. You can always bend the knee, you can always work here if you need to as well. That's totally fine. Five, four, three, two, one. Great. Coming up, we've got a plank tuck. So step in or jump in, that's going to be your choice. We're going five, four, three, two, one. Step in looks like this. Alternate feet each time. If you want to jump, go for it. But I want you to really, you should not be able to talk in these ones. Belly draws to spine. It's like somebody is punching you in the stomach. Pull that belly up and in. Three, two, one. Great job. Right arm goes out to the side. Four, three, point the toe, squeeze the leg on the right. And we cross over and reach up and tap. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, guys, one round done. We've got two more to go. Straight to that left side. Going in three, two, one. Five, four, three, two, one. Nice 
nice work, guys. Setting up your version of a plank tuck. You get a feel for it. Four, three, two, one. Maybe you turn this into a little bit of a jump, but put the crouch in before you jump. No need to rush it. Should be pretty taxing on their own. Five, four, three, two, one. Great job, guys. Ooh. Right leg squeeze, left hand comes across. Three, two, one. So bring that left hand over to the right ankle. Squeeze the shit out of your right leg. Like point the toe, squeeze the quad. Four, three, two, one. One more round, guys. Straight to the other side. Left leg will be lifting this time. Four, three, two, one. So keep going with you guys. This is the last round for this one. Three, two, one. So play tuck, your version. Five, four, three, two, one. So really feel like you're lifting those hips up, pulling that belly button to your spine. Option, step in and out. Please take what you need. Five, four, three, two, one. One more side, guys. And then we rest. Right leg extends, left arm will be coming across to that right ankle. Three, two, one. is dumbbell or not always completely up to you um, but I'm sure by this time a lot of us have something at home um, due to it being a second lockdown um, coming out of it as well so what we're looking for here is a wide like um, sumo stance but I'm really plugging down with my feet like good grip so when I bend into my left knee, I'm really squeezing my quad on the right so much that my kneecap on the right lifts. I've got a good grip, I'm pressing the blade edges of my feet down. Weight comes to the outer edge of the left foot. I come up and then I press and I'm squeezing my lat and keeping my bicep and my ear. So bend into the knee, squeeze the quad up and press, cool? So we're going to go the right side, then the left side, and then we actually come down for a push-up hold. When we do a push-up hold, everyone's favorite, I know. Options, option one is here, hold low. My, my our forehead's not on the ground. Option two, hold here, belly to spine. Option three, of course, on the toes. It's gonna to be up to you. So we're going in about 25 seconds. So grab a weight if you have one. So side, Cossack press. Right side, then left side. And then we go into our hell push up. So 20 seconds only. Three rounds, weight in the right hand, big wide stance, grip down with your feet. Three, two, one. 
So you can still do this if you don't have a weight, of course, 100%. So when I go across the body, I'm squeezing the obliques on the left. Nice, strong, straight arm as I punch up to the ceiling. So moving quite quickly through these ones if you've got it. Five, four, three, two, rest. Feet stay the same. Good grip. So my feet are pretty much facing forward. Really plugging down with the feet, using them as much as possible. Let's go. 20 seconds on the other side. Try to lock out the arm. Bicep on the air. Nice big wide squat into a lunge. Three, two, one. 20 seconds, your version of push up hold. We want to tuck the tailbone under, so sad dog. Three, two, one. If you're here, we want to really get down low, at least the elbow height, maybe on your toes. Breathe. Squeeze your glutes, tuck the tailbone under. Four, three, two, one. Nice work. So just take your time to come up. I'm just going to give you a little bit longer. I know what it's like going down off the ground. So you'll get an extra 10 seconds from that, from that push to come up. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Side press, side press. Nice strong legs here. Go right across that opposite foot to get the oblique crunch as well. Don't forget to squeeze the straight leg. And time. Straight to the other side. Five seconds. Whew. And one more round after this, guys. Three, two, one. Keep the shoulders away from the ears. Keep that to the side, they bunch up, the trapezius comes up around your nose. We want to keep them back. We do enough of this one with stress and under tension using computers. So I'm using a, a yogic style push up. Alright, guys, last round. Three, two, one. <sighs> Definitely be warm and hopefully have got a really nice little sweat up by this point. Oh, five, four, three, two, one. Try to catch your breath as often as possible in that 10 second breather. Three, two, one. Regulate for a moment or two, or three. While you 
you are there. So, a little bit, uh, I did mention, a little bit into the legs today. This is uh, now working with the lunge. There's two variations, right? So, I want to show you the first variation, which is more strength. And also balance. I'm really big on balance, I think it's really important. So, if you don't want the cardio option, you'll be doing this. So, at the top of your mat, you'll be stepping back to a lunge, and then with the knee in, and I'm rounding the spine here because I'm trying to work um, some compression. So, foot goes back, and knee curls in. Don't have to use a weight. Foot goes back, curl in. So, I'm getting an angry cat through the spine, and ribs to belly button. Now, if you don't want to do that option and you're like, yes, I want more cardio, go you. Um, I'm going to take the strength option today, I think. So, however, if you want cardio, this is what you'll be doing. You'll be stepping back and plyometric jump. Step back, plyometric jump. Step back, plyometric jump. Your choice. But don't rush it. Oh, we actually like fully explode on that plyometric. That means you might get like five or six out in 20 seconds. Then we come down, we've got one of my favourite moves here, really great for shoulder strength, triceps, um, and our hamstrings. Option one, just kick up to here, totally fine, weight through the heels. Option two, kick up, weight through the heels, cross over, tap. Option three, up, tap the opposite ankle. Great stuff, guys. This is your last round. So get what you need, get ready, I'm not going yet. Going about 20 seconds, we're going to do the right side lunge, yeah, then the left side, and then the crab toe touch. Alright, so two lunges, one crab toe touch, going in 10 seconds. I'm going to start strength-wise, um, whatever you choose to stay with it. So I'm going to stay with the weight, you guys do what you need to do. So lunge, and then curl. If you're doing the jumping variation, good for you. Keep staying with that though for the whole three rounds if you can. So whatever you've chosen, you're here now. Five, four, three, two, rest. We're gonna go straight to that other side. So if you've chosen strength, you stay with strength. If you've chosen fly, you stay with fly. Three, two, one. And again, just for those who are doing fly, it looks like this. Lunge, hop, lunge, hop, lunge, hop. So I'm pausing for a little bit at the bottom. Three, two, one. Great job. Coming down and grab two. Ooh. Bend the knees, weight through the heels, hands are back. Four, three, two, one. Remember, option you can just do a lift. Option two, twist over. Option three, work to touch. The opposite ankle, straighten your arms as the feet come up. So we're getting a real tricep extension here too. And we open up through the front of the shoulders. I love this move. Four, three, two, one. Same deal. I need you guys an extra 10 seconds just get down off the ground in case your head feels a bit weird with that. So there's no rush, but we are going in 10. Alrighty, so it's a step lunge. I'm not going to use a weight at all. You're choosing plyometric or strength. Three, two, one. Step back and curl. Feel free to hold weight. I said my legs are cooked. So it's into my body a bit more here.
Movement is essential every single day. Like I move every day, but my movement always changes. Always. I always ask myself in the morning, like, what is it that I need today? How do I need to move? You know? And moving accordingly to that. Letting my body teach me five, four, three, two, one. One more step. All right, guys, let's get this out of the way. So remember, stay with your final trick if you're doing that. If not, strength move three, two, one. Again, I'm not using a weight. I'm done with the weight, but please use a weight at home if you're feeling good with it. If you're doing that jumping lunge, you'd be cooked by now. Absolutely, but stay with it. You've only got six seconds left. Three, two, one. Oh, left side. Five, four, three, two, one. Really using that tripod in my front foot too, you know? I bang on about it a lot, but it's such a game changer. Four, three, two, one. Nice guys, one more coming down to that crab toe touch. Ooh. Four, three, two, one. Last one, last 20 seconds here guys. Push out of the floor so you squeeze your triceps. Eight. And time. Beautiful. We're going to roll. Well done. We're going to roll straight down to the ground after you've had a sip. Water, take some good time out and some stretching. So, before you do anything, just lie down, take them over, back to you. So, bend your knees. Actually, really feel into just how amazing it is to move your body. Like to have this opportunity to create a sweat, to play with different movements that might be unfamiliar. Yeah, heart rate up and essentially to feel good. You know, move to feel good, not to punish. Don't ever move because of what you ate last night or what you drank or what you did or what you didn't do yesterday. Never ever move because of that. You'll only put your body under more stress and tension and you'll be moving for the wrong reasons, which means your body will be holding on and soaring anyway. So wake up today, move for today, move because we can. So take that moment to have gratitude for that. So we're going to bring our right ankle onto our left quad. And of course straight into a figure four or reclined pigeon, whatever you call it. My hands are too slippery to hold on. Just do your best here. Getting deep into the hip and the glute max on the right side. If you need to flex your right foot to look after your right knee, then do that. Try to catch your breath here. So breathing in through the nose and out through the nose. Let the left foot come down. We're going to get into the hamstring on the right. So extend the right foot up, keep a bend into the right knee. And I like to flex the right foot, pulling the right toes back towards the head. Some of you might be able to grab the bottom of the foot, but don't force it, or even if you still grip the right big toe. But again, no force it. Just find what works for you. I like to keep the stretch part of it pretty quiet so you just have an opportunity to pause. Don't miss this bit though. Don't hurry up and rush into your day. Give yourself at least a couple of minutes to look after yourself and to actually set up your day. Bring the right knee over to the left side and we're kind of get to a supine twist. Again, just focus on your breath. Try to breathe in for four and out for four.
come back to center. And just placing the left heel now into the right foot. Either stay here or reach through, find that variation. Oh, it's so tight. Whoa. That's why I don't run. Or if I do run, I probably should do it more often so that this doesn't happen. Oh. Yeah, it's very unusual that my body is like, oh, let's go for a run. Um, I just think I need to get out in nature a bit yesterday and that was that was what happened. Um, felt good, I just ran probably a lot further than what I probably uh, was used to in my body. <laughs> but yeah, I'll be definitely complimenting it with some yin yoga today. Now unravel, hamstrings on the left, flex the foot. Finding your version here, again, it's going to be different each side too. So, um, you know, one hamstring always is going to feel so, so different to the other. So just to sit in, and that will change daily as well, you know. So wherever you are, just relax into it. We keep the soft knee bend so that we don't get into the nerves. And then we bring the left, uh, it's called knee, over to the right and find your version of a supine twist. We hold here for about a minute. I really want you to focus on your breath here. Now, so we're actually going to roll over onto our bellies, just come into a bit of a sphinx pose. Forearms down, press the pubic bone down into the ground. I'm just going to hold here. Oh, I just got a really good crack there, and that was great. So you can always come down a bit lower, but slight press down of the pubic bone to create space in the lumbar. If it is feeling good for you, of course, you can pop up in the seal. Another three or four breaths. Child's gone. Do you want to set your intention for your day? Ideally, we should do this first thing in the morning. Start our day with affirmations. You know, start our day with gratitude, start our day with breath. And in that time, that five to seven, ten minutes setting up your day, visualize and feel into every single cell in your body how you want to flow today. Let it light you up from the inside out. So take a moment to breathe that in. Breathe out, let go of anything that is standing in the way of that. When you feel ready, just coming up to your knees. And we're just going to take three beautiful deep breaths here. Five counts in with the pause, five count out. So inhale. Pause and exhale. Pause. Belly breath in. Pause. Exhale.
Pause. Last one. Breathe in. Pause. Breathe out. Thanks, everyone. Guys are all done for your day. Hope you had fun.